There's some things that women need more of, and there's some things that men need more of. We have bio-individuality, we have gender individuality, we have to look at this stuff when we're evaluating what supplements we should take, what foods we should eat. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a breakdown of why men need collagen. Not necessarily more than women, but why men shouldn't neglect it. Okay, way too many men say collagen, that's good for the hair, skin, and nails, I'm gonna leave that to the ladies. Well, guess what? There's a huge thing that you're missing out on when it comes down to building more muscle, when it comes down to recovery, when it comes down to joint health, and even your brain and, heck, even your skin and nails, which you probably still wanna pay attention to even if you don't wanna talk about it, all right? Hey, we've got new videos coming out all the time. I wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then go ahead and hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications. Now, I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna get right into it. We're gonna cover five points. We're gonna talk about muscle growth and how collagen relates. Then we're gonna talk about muscle recovery. Then we're gonna talk about joints. Then we're gonna talk about the brain. And then we're gonna talk about hair, skin, and nails because yes, it still matters. Okay, so first and foremost, contrary to popular belief, collagen is critical to muscle growth, okay? Between one and 10% of your muscle mass is made up of collagen. Now, I don't know about you, but if someone ripped away 10% of my muscle mass just on a whim, I wouldn't be too happy. So we shouldn't neglect that 10% that's coming from collagen. In fact, it makes up a big portion of our structure of our muscle as well. Now, here's an interesting study to put this into perspective. The British Journal of Nutrition published a study, took a look at 27 men that hadn't really been working out, and they gave them 15 grams of collagen, okay? And they had them work out resistance training for 12 weeks, and they compared that to a control group that did not consume any collagen. Well, at the end of the 12 weeks, what did they find out? they found out that the group that ended up taking collagen had a significant increase in muscle mass, but also strength. Now, researchers hypothesize that it has to do with the arginine and the glycine that is in the collagen. Okay, arginine and glycine, when combined in the right amounts, create creatine. Okay, most of us think of creatine as just a supplement, but creatine is naturally occurring, and if we can improve the natural occurrence of creatine within the body, then we have an increase in strength and with strength comes some mass. So yes, believe it or not, collagen has a big role in overall muscle building. Now, let's take it the next step further and let's take a look at muscle fibers, okay? Because we have to understand what differentiates men from women in this case. There was a study that was published in Experimental Physiology that found that when women train, when women work out, they're more likely to turn muscle fibers into type one muscle fibers, which I'll explain in a second, and men are more likely to turn those muscle fibers into type 2A muscle fibers. Type 1 muscle fibers, which in this case is the women, are the muscle fibers that are really good for, you know, like endurance, okay? They're more aerobic, so they have more stamina. So it's true that when women start to work out, they actually build more muscular endurance and stamina faster than men. That's cool. Okay, men on the other hand build more type 2A, which means they build more of the anaerobic type tissues. They build the muscles that are faster, more reactive, and give it a little bit more strength, which would make sense, right? It's kind of how we would normally expect things. The thing that we have to remember is that recovery is different for each of those muscle fibers. Okay, type 1 muscle fibers don't require as much protein, so women can get by with a little bit less, although it's important they pay attention to quality probably a little bit more. Men, on the other hand, you need a little bit more in the way of protein and collagen to support the type 2A muscle fibers that are being presented in your body ultimately. Now let's take a look at what the Europe PMC published so that we can see how muscles effectively grow, or at least so we think. Okay, so we have these things called satellite cells, and these satellite cells are single nucleus organisms, so basically when they, they divide, okay? So I want you to imagine this. You have a muscle belly, you have a muscle, right? And you have a bunch of muscle cells within that muscle. And what happens is a satellite cell will divide and create a new satellite cell just outside of that muscle, okay? And then that satellite cell, once it's outside the muscle, fuses to the muscle and causes it to grow. And then it happens again and repeats and repeats with different cellular trauma and muscle trauma. Well, what does this have to do with collagen? Well, it's collagen that allows that fusion to take place. If you didn't have that collagen, you'd just have like a sloppy random growth of muscle that would never have any structure, it wouldn't really do anything. So you need the collagen to allow these type two muscle fibers and these muscle fibers in general to have the right kind of cellular division and ultimately fusion that you need to grow muscle. Now we have to take a look at inflammation for a minute in our joints, okay? Because I don't care who you are, whether you're 21 years old or whether you're 50 years old or 75 years old, inflammation is something you'd be paying attention to. You just may not realize that it's affecting your lifts and affecting your workouts, right? Okay, well, here's what happens. When we have any kind of inflammation within our joints, 
it breaks down what are called proteoglycans. Okay? And these proteoglycans are a big part of the extracellular matrix that's required for not just overall joint health and development and structure. So what happens is inflammation itself, just from overtraining and from damage and from poor health, affects and depletes our collagen. Now, if collagen is in place, then we can actually reverse this process. Okay, if we have the collagen in place, we can support those proteoglycans so they don't get broken down by the inflammation. So inflammation has less of a toll. So that means if you're arthritic, you really need to be taking in collagen so that you can help restore and rebuild the cartilage that's allowing your joints to be flexible and not be in so much pain. Now there's one very important thing that you do need to remember with collagen. And that's the fact that our body has natural stores of the amino acids required to create collagen. So the argument would generally be, I don't need to take a collagen supplement because my body already has these amino acids available. You see, think of your body as having just like a big pool of amino acids and it has just millions and millions and millions of amino acids that it can pull from to assemble specific proteins that it needs at a given time. Okay, so that means if it needs collagen, it can pull out the three amino acids that it needs. Okay, so the argument would be, I don't need to take a collagen supplement. Well, that's kind of true. You see, what's more important is the blueprint. And what I mean by the blueprint is how collagen forms itself. And we have different types of collagen, type one, two, three, four, five, six. And all these different types are all dependent on different factors and things that help this collagen come together, like collagen peptides. So if you were to take just a traditional collagen, like, okay, let's just be blunt here, eating a tendon or something, if you were to do that, your body would have to deconstruct the collagen out of that tendon, I know this is crass, but, and then it would have to put that into the pool and then your body would still have to assemble it as is. So eating direct pure collagen isn't always the most efficient way. Okay, it's better to get the aminos and to support your body with the hyaluronic acid and support your body with the peptides that are actually needed to create the collagen that's required. So if you are interested, down below there is a link to check out Sun Warrior's collagen building peptides. So these are interesting because they're collagen boosting peptides that actually don't even have collagen in them. They give your body what it needs to produce the collagen. So quite effectively, this stuff can not only build collagen within your body, but it helps you extract and utilize collagen from your diet. So whether you are vegan, vegetarian, keto, carnivore, whatever, it's gonna help you utilize that collagen a little bit better because it's giving you the peptides. And since men require it arguably even more than women, I think it's something you might wanna check out. So Sun Warrior created this product. So after this video, go ahead and check them out down in the description. Big sponsor of the channel and they've helped us out a lot. So you can give them a big thank you by checking them out. Okay, now let's move into the brain for a second. Okay, most of us think the brain has nothing to do with collagen. Well, let's take a look at what happens in the case of Alzheimer's for a second. And before you tune out, let me tell you that this applies to everyone, not just people with Alzheimer's. Okay, a lot of people will say that men age faster than women when it comes down to the brain health. And guess what? Some of that is actually true. This is a study that was published in the Proceedings of the International Academy of Sciences. Okay, and it took a look at the chronological and metabolic age of men versus women's brains. So they took a look at 205 people, 121 women and 84 men, and they measured how glucose was oxidized in their brain. They basically were measuring how active is their brain with fuel. Well, get this, this is pretty wild stuff. They used an algorithm to kind of reverse engineer essentially how old someone's brain would be. And they found that on average, women's brains were 3.8 years younger than their chronological age. So we have chronological age, our actual physical age, how long we've been on the planet, and then we have metabolic age which is our relative age based on how healthy we are. So if someone was 60 years old, their brain was more like 56.2 years old. Okay, so I mean, it's definitely a big difference, right? With men, they found that their actual brain age was about 2.4 years older than their chronological age. So it shows that men's brains age faster than women's, which explains why we see so much cognitive decline earlier on with men than we do with women, right? Well, where does collagen come into play with this? Collagen comes into play because we have to look at collagen type six, which actually protects the brain from things like beta amyloid plaque, which is a big cause of Alzheimer's disease, right? So what they found in a lot of mice models is that if there was Alzheimer's disease present, there was an influx or an increase in collagen type six, which at first glance is like, uh-oh, that means collagen is gonna give me Alzheimer's. No, no, no. What your body is doing is your brain is saying, 
we have this issue here. We need to upregulate collagen to try to actually fix the issue. So that's why there's an increase in collagen. That means there's a collagen demand, okay? So we have to support this demand. So in theory, if you were to go ahead and add more collagen into the mix, you could add a layer of protection. Now, what is hypothesized that actually goes on is that when you have some kind of beta amyloid plaque or degenerative uh, brain disease, what's happening is you have these gaps in the extracellular matrix that's allowing things to come in and attack the neurons, okay? So normally the neurons are sort of encapsulated and protected, but when you have a breakdown of the collagen, what's happening is these amyloid plaques, these small particles, are able to get in and attack the neuron, killing the neuron, right? But it's found that collagen actually protects the neuron. So collagen type six, again, a specific kind of collagen, not one that you're gonna get from just eating a tendon or something, right? Okay, allows the brain to be a little bit protected. Lastly, I want to talk about a study that was published from Skin Research and Technology because it's very, very, very important that you know this. And this is super simple. It was found that men actually get wrinkles faster and more aggressively than women. A lot of times women will say that they get wrinkles quicker, but studies have shown that men actually get them quite a bit worse and quite a bit faster than women up until about age 65 in which it balances out. And then at older years, over 70, women tend to accelerate a little bit faster. So in the middle age group, men are going to have wrinkles a little bit faster than women. And collagen, whether you want to deny it or not, does play a very critical role in hair, skin, and nails. That's probably where most of the marketing is surrounding it because most of the research is there surrounding hair, skin, and nails. So I don't know, I'm a guy, I don't really want a bunch of wrinkles and I don't want to go bald. So sure, I'll still pay attention to it, right? Anyhow, I hope that this gives a little bit of justification as to why collagen isn't something you should just brush away. Okay, you should give your body what it needs to produce and create collagen from a good solid blueprint that your wonderful DNA is giving you. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.